Hello and welcome. In this screencast, we'll demonstrate how to build a reproducible CI pipeline using the Artifactory Jenkins plugin. First, let's install the Artifactory plugin from the Plugin Manager catalog. The plugin also installs all the needed dependencies. Before configuring the plugin, let's add our Artifactory server credentials to the General Jenkins Credentials Store. Also, we'll add Java and Maven to our tools. The Maven instance name is important, since we will refer to it in our build configuration. Once that's done, we can configure the system-wide Artifactory servers. This is done in the Jenkins system configuration. Keep in mind the selected server ID. We'll need it later for the pipeline configuration. After providing the Artifactory server URL, we need to configure the default deployer credentials. We can use a simple username and password pair or use the Jenkins credentials plugin to reuse the globally defined credentials. The Test Connection button helps us verify that our setup is good. Now we can set up a new build. We'll use the new pipeline build type to get the advantage of configuration as code capabilities of Jenkins 2. The Groovy DSL for build definition can be loaded from version control or just typed in. For the sake of this demo, we'll use a letter and copy paste the script from the JFrog Dev Project Examples GitHub repository. As you can see, the pipeline is built in four stages. Build, Artifactory Configuration, Exec Maven, and Publish Build Info. In the build stage, we specify where to check out the source from. We'll use an example of a simple multi-module Maven build. In the Artifactory Configuration stage, we configure the repositories to be used for resolution and deployment, and whether the build info metadata should be collected. In the exec maven stage, we specify the POM XML file to run and the goals to be executed. Notice how we use the install phase and not deploy. We are delegating the deployment to the Artifactory plugin because it ensures that the deployment will only occur after a successful completion of the whole build and not after each module ensuring that we won't end up with a partial build deployed to Artifactory. In the Publish Build Info stage, the plugin will upload the build info metadata to Artifactory. Let's modify the script according to our needs. We need to specify the Maven instance name. Also, let's enable capturing the environment variables. Lastly, 
we need to switch the Artifactory server configuration to refer to the predefined Artifactory instance we configured in the Jenkins system configuration. Now we can start the build. As you can see from the log, as expected, the source code is checked out from GitHub and the Maven build starts. The dependencies are downloaded from the repositories as configured in our build script. Once the build is completed, the artifacts are deployed to Artifactory along with the build info metadata. We can use the link in the log or the dedicated Artifactory logo button on the results page to navigate to the build in Artifactory. Clicking on either of these links takes you to the build page in Artifactory. The information provided here was gathered from the build's single source of truth, the CI server. This is critical metadata. If it's not captured during the build, it is lost forever. In the overview screen, we can see which tools and users triggered the build, when, and how long it took. Another important piece of metadata is the link back to the Jenkins build result page. That's where you can see the build log, the test results, and the source changes that triggered that build. While we're here, let's trigger another build. We'll need it later. Getting back to the Build Info browser, in the Publish Modules tab, you'll see the modules that were built. Here, we have our four modules of our multi-module Maven project. Diving into one of them, you can see the list of published artifacts and dependencies that were used to build this module. Notice that the dependencies were collected at runtime by monitoring Maven during the build process. Let's find a common I.O. dependency. We can navigate to the tree view of Artifactory and see additional details, including the artifact license, size, when and by whom it was deployed and accessed, as well as snippets to copy-paste into your build tool. Let's take a look at the Builds tab. It has information about the relation of this artifact to builds. As expected, this dependency was used by both of the builds that we just ran, twice in each, as a dependency for two different modules. Artifacts in Artifactory always know which build they are part of. This is very important. For example, you know not to delete an artifact because it is used as a dependency in a specific build. Artifacts that were created by a build have even more metadata. To demonstrate this, let's navigate back to our build and navigate to a tree view of one of the produced artifacts. In the Properties tab, you can see that the build name and the build number became a part of the artifact's metadata, giving you the ability, for example, to find all artifacts related to a specific build. Let's switch the build and drill down into the second build we ran earlier. On the main page of the Build Browser, you can see a list of all builds with the last build ID and the last build time highlighted for every build. Drilling down to a specific build shows a list of all the builds run, 
you can easily jump into a Jenkins results page of a build directly from here. Drilling even further down brings us to the build details page we have already seen. This time, let's switch to the environment tab. On this page, we can see a list of all the environment and system variables that were in effect during the build in the CI server. This is another example of critical metadata information that only exists in the CI server. After all, the environment is as important for the outcome of the build as the source code revision or the build tool version that was used. For example, how can we know which version of Java was used to run our Maven build? It can have a dramatic effect on the build, but we didn't specify it in our build script or our pipeline script. Filtering the system variables unveils the mystery. It was an Oracle Java 8 update 121. Now let's say something did go wrong in our second build. For example, it was built with a different version of Java that results in an erroneous behavior. How can we know? Diff browser tab to the rescue. On this page, we can compare this build to any previous build, in our case, the first build we ran, and see the differences in the produced modules, use dependencies, and the captured environment variables. Another very important aspect of the build info metadata is that it's open and ready for automation. The Artifactory Jenkins plugin constructs a JSON document with all the build info information and deploys it to Artifactory with the artifacts at the end of the build. Both the JSON format of that document and the well-documented API endpoints that interact with the build info are great for automation. For example, for consumption and processing of the build info metadata by other tools. Such automation lies in the heart of rapid software continuous delivery and DevOps. Release fast or die. This concludes our Artifactory Jenkins integration screencast. Please visit jfrog.com to learn more about this integration, other screencasts, and documentation on different features of various JFrog products and free trials. Thank you.